So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy Wednesday night uh, to, uh, to be here with us. On behalf of the Department of Student Activities, uh, the whole UConn Elections team, I want to thank you for your interest in, in running for office and running for these positions. These positions are important because they assist us in offering quality programming at all of our UConn campuses. Uh, they assist us in our mission of building campus communities that have a lot of opportunities for student involvement and engagement. I just want this to be an informal, casual sort of information session. Feel free to stop me, ask questions at any point. Uh, something I'm saying is not making sense, feel free to chime, uh, chime in. Uh, just so you know, we're also live streaming this event. So folks who are not able to be here in the room tonight, either um, for whatever reason, they're at a regional campus, uh, at a regional campus uh, they're able to watch the presentation as well. Oh, so welcome. All right, here's what we have on the agenda. I'm going to review some of the deadlines and due dates and overall timeline of the joint election process. We're going to talk about some of the election procedures and policies. And then that will take about the first 30 minutes or so. And then I want to turn it over to uh, the student leaders in the room who will share a little bit about their experiences. And if you have any questions about the roles or the responsibilities, you can ask them directly. One thing you're going to hear me say a lot tonight is that every organization at every campus, right, uh, at a, every organization and for each position, the procedures and the policies are going to be a little different. So I'm sorry if you hear me say that quite a bit. Um, but basically what this is going to do is give you a general idea of what to expect uh, and to draw your attention to sort of those big items that you should have on your radar if you're interested in applying uh, for candidacy of, uh, for one of these positions. So a little bit about the joint elections process itself. As the name suggests, it takes all of these different things, all this different stuff, uh, that students are able to vote on, including why you're all here, the one component that brought you all here, student leadership positions. It also takes, uh, for trustees through organizations, if they have fee affirmations or fee increases, that's part of the joint elections process. If there's any constitutional amendments for trustees through organizations, all of that appears uh, when students sign in to look and vote uh, during this early March, March 3rd to March 5th elections process. Any questions about what the joint elections is or what's involved? What people vote on? Great. I'm just going to check my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. So for the component of the joint elections that brought you all here, right, uh, we're going to talk about what positions are open and, and what the process for submitting your candidacy for these positions are. So as you can see, across all campuses, there are different positions open for the next academic year, the 2020 and 2020, 2020, 2021 academic year. All campuses are eligible, students on all campuses are eligible to campaign and uh, vote for the student trustee election. You know, come on in. Things that are, uh, or excuse me, uh, positions that are designated with an asterisk uh, is a special election. That means there is either a vacancy in that seat or the current student leader is unable to fulfill the remainder of their term. For those positions, uh, that's essentially what the incoming candidate would do, would fulfill the remainder of that term. Any questions about this slide? I'm going to go over really quickly just some of the important dates, uh, some due dates, some deadlines. You can also find a complete list of this timeline on our website, vote.uconn.edu. Vote, <coughs> vote it's a fantastic website. Um, this presentation, I should have mentioned, this presentation and other materials is going to be available 
on the vote.ucon.edu website following uh, following this presentation. So, hey, how you doing? So, obviously, you're all here tonight uh, at the candidate information session. The next date that you should have on your radar if you're interested in uh, campaigning and submitting your candidacy is February 7th. At that date, uh, intent to runs are due at noon to respective organizations. So. Uh, again, as I said, every organization, every campus does things a little differently. If your organization submitted an intent to run form to our office is located on the vote.ucon.edu website, you'll fill out that form, submit it to the appropriate person, uh, and that's essentially letting the organization know that you do intend to campaign for that position. Um, if you go on the website, you don't see an intent to run form for your organization, uh, it's still a good idea to let your organization know by the 7th if you intend to campaign uh, for a position in that org. Stores USG, this is uh, something that Stores USG calls their seeking clause. The names of president, vice president, and comptroller candidates are sent to our office, uh, and that is so that our office can conduct student leader eligibility checks. <coughs> we recognize that these positions uh, and just campaigning for these positions takes a lot of time and effort, uh, and so Stores USG has this clause to ensure that the student leaders who are running for those positions uh, are on good academic and probationary status with the university. On February 18th, orgs, uh, the, the individual student orgs will certify the packets and send a complete uh, candidate list to our, our office. That's not something that you all need to worry about, but just to know, on the 18th, um, yes, that's right, February 18th, um, your signatures for your petitions are going to be certified by the, our, our office, and your, the list of candidates will appear on our vote.ucon.edu website. So by this time, you will have submitted your bio, your, you know, your name, uh, on your intent to run for those specific positions. We'll take those, put them all together, put it on our website. If you want to have your photo taken by our graphics department in student activities, you can sign up to do so between February 19th and February 20th, and we'll send out a sign up, sign up link so that you can sign up for a time to come in, take your headshot um, that we can use on our website, also on our ballots. So when people go on to the U-Contact system, they will be able to see your name, your bio, and uh, your headshot. Hello. Hi. February 18th is when marketing for elections begins. So at this time, you can begin marketing for your specific, or excuse me, campaigning for your specific position. Any questions about this slide? Yes. Wait, so can you talk about the um, campaigning designation or the ca start of campaign period on February 18th? Mm hmm So uh, we encourage campaigning to occur between the dates of February 18th and uh, March 3rd, which is the first day of joint elections process. And that is because uh, <coughs> the student organization packets are certified on the 18th. So candidates will be certified by their respective organizations on this day, saying, yes, you're okay, you're good to campaign, you're good to start campaigning. This leaves about a two week window, which uh, was created because campaigning for these positions, again, takes a lot of time and effort and energy. We recognize that you're also students. <coughs> so we, we, we limit this, this campaigning window so that um, it doesn't, uh, affect other areas of your student life. Yes. So you do recommend not to, to not start campaigning before the 18th? Right, because student organ, uh, your respective, whoever the respective advisor or whoever's in charge of elections in those specific organizations won't certify you until February 18th okay. to be able to run officially as a candidate. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, so we do uh, we do campaign before. Like, what happens in terms of like um, penalties or just like is that a violation? Or I'm just wondering. Well, um, you know, 
know, I'm gonna say this all night. Um, every uh, student org handles campaign violations differently. Okay. So those should be listed in um, in the the election packets and in your respective organizations governing documents. Yes. I might just. I don't want to step on your toes. No, please. Maybe able to lend a little bit of light to this. So in uh, I'm Caleb Moore. I'm the Chief Justice of USG. Um, in our bylaws, it says that you can start campaigning, you know, of course you won't have been certified, like Kurt said, until the 18th, but you can start campaigning when the election packet comes out. Um, the election packet has been released, so you can start campaigning, at least in USG's eyes, once the packet's out, but know that you won't be certified by student activities until the 18th. Um, in regard to violations, um, like I said, once the packet comes out, you can start campaigning um, violations. If you want to talk about that, I can get into that later. But for that, at least. Hi, everyone. I'm Avalyn. I'm the Elections and Outreach Commissioner for USG. Um, so up there it says like the 18th, which is when you'll be certified. Um, on our channels, you'll see uh, for the petitions that they're due February 14th. Um, so that is a deadline that we have for USG just so like I'm on, on my end I'll be able to send everything over to them beforehand So I just kind of want to clear that up in the air before you start seeing any different dates So I encourage everyone to get everything in by February 14th um, But I am uh, I understand that getting that many um, signatures especially for those of you interested in running for president vice president You have to get I want to say 450 signatures. Um, so I understand that that can be a little tough so um, I am open to working with you I know in the last election I definitely worked with people who um, weren't able to make that deadline um, but just know February 14th is a deadline that we're pushing for but like I said I am a nice person I understand we're all students and uh, I'll hand out my business card in a few so you'll always have my email too. Thank you for that thank you for adding um, again Every student org does run their elections process a little differently. I should clarify that you will uh, be petitioning and collecting signatures before this February 18th date. Um, this is sort of just a window um, where, where really active campaigning begins. <coughs> in this window, is, for example, the Stories USG debate, um, and is considered the campaigning window of the elections process. You will, again, be petitioning before that. And yes. Um, I will say um, for the student trustee election, this is a binding date. So there is a period um, beyond which like, you can't campaign mm -hmm. before that period or you're in violation of SDEC mm -hmm. policies. So make sure you read your packet because yes. the, the rules do vary. Yes, rules do vary. Read your, your packets um, thoroughly, right? Um, one thing I will say later on is that individual Candidates are required um, and they're expected to know and understand their uh, specific campaign policies and regulations, right? If you have questions about what is and what is not considered a campaign regulation, what is and what is not allowed, please ask a representative from your organization, contact our office. If we don't know the answer, we'll refer you to someone who does. So thoroughly go through your election packets, go through the governing documents of the organizations. Any other questions? Thank you for adding, appreciate that. Again, I'll send out a link um, at the UConn Student Activities Office and stores if you want to come take a headshot with our graphics team. Uh, we'll send out a link for you to be able to do that. Some more important dates. February 24th is the Stores USG Presidential Debate. 6.30 to 8.30, location to be determined. Still working on that. This is something that you don't need to worry about as uh, candidates, um, but this refers to fee affirmation and fee increases for student organizations. Yes, Bree. Um, so Kurt, does that debate include the comptroller debate or just presidential? Um, if USG elects to have a comptroller debate, that will be up to the elections oversight committee. But during that time as well? It would, it would occur during that two-week campaign window. Okay. Um, so if you and Adeline decide that you want to include the controllers in this debate, you can. If you want to have a separate debate, you can also do that. But it would have to occur in that two-week window. So I can kind of add now, we were planning to do the controller debate during the scene. So it's okay. presidential and controller. So it's here and here. It's all okay. the 24th. So if you're interested 
in running for um, USG president, vice president, comptroller, you should have this date on your on your calendar. And I will make that correction on the website. Any other questions? So the actual 2020 joint elections are going to occur between March 3rd, noon, and March 5th at noon. During this time, uh, and in the two weeks you're going to be campaigning for yourself, our office is going to be encouraging students to vote and uh, you know, encouraging our, the student organizations we work with to encourage students to vote. Tell people how to vote. Voting occurs on UContact. If you're not familiar with using UContact, um, it's a fantastic uh, database that Student Activity uses quite often. All the ballots are going to appear um, on the UContact system. So, for example, if I'm a first year student at the store's campus living in Northwest, when I log on to UContact to vote between the 3rd and the 5th, all of the different ballots that I can vote on are going to appear. All the different ballots of which I am a uh, constituent member of including undergraduate student trustee, uh, stores president, vice president, comptroller, uh, the special election to fill the residential seat if there's one open for Northwest, um, as well as any fee affirmations or fee increases. Those will all appear and that will be an individualized ballot for each person who signs on. Any questions? Yes? Why is there only a, a 48 hour window for the, the joint elections? Do you know? Um, I don't have a specific answer for that. Um, okay. I don't have a specific answer for that. Yeah. Sorry. I can find out for you. Oh. Um, but it is a two day, four to 48 hour window um, in which voting occurs. I only asked just because, like, voter turnout and, like, stuff like that, and, like, getting the maximum amount of people to vote. I don't know. 48 hours just sounds like a stretch, but, like, that's just in my favor. But that's fine. And that's, I was just, you know, that, and that's something we can we can take in, into consideration for, for future elections. Yeah. Um, and that's something you can obviously talk to me or another member of our team um, if you feel the window should be longer or shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're very open to changing things and changing procedures in the future. Okay. March 6th, uh, results are emailed to the candidates who have won the election, pending appeals. I'm gonna to touch on appeals a little later. Again, every student organization handles campaign violations and their appeals process differently. Okay, so know a little bit about your respective organization's appeals process. I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit later. All right, procedures. Just grab my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. If anything doesn't make sense, please, please, please ask your respective organization or contact a member of the UConn Elections team, myself or our assistant director, Krista, and student activities. Uh, well, if you're confused about a specific policy or regulation, let us know. We can look through those together. Ask us questions. Again, candidates have an individual responsibility to thoroughly understand their specific organization's campaign policies and procedures. You want to make sure that you review your election pot, uh, your election packets, and the governing documents uh, pertaining to elections uh, for each of your organizations. Complete petitions as needed. Different organizations, different campuses, and different positions are going to require a different number of signatures on those petitions. My recommendation and the recommendation of the UConn Elections team is you want to be able, um, you want to get more than what's required in case some of those petition signatures are invalid because they're illegible or whatever other reason. So get, it's a good idea to get a little more than what is required. And I already touched on the Stores USG seeking clause about student leader eligibility checks. Any questions? So now I'm going to talk very generally about different campaign policies. Um, 
I'm not going to be able to talk specifically to different organizations, specific policies, um, you know, the policies and regulations for the sewer trustee election differ from those from the stores USG election, differ from those from the Stanford uh, student government election, right? But these are things that you should think about and consider when you're uh, beginning your campaign, all right? A complete list of the posting and marketing policies will be available on our website. Some things to keep in mind, you cannot um, use university announcements such as the Daily Digest in some organizations to campaign yourself. Listserv emails, there are different regulations concerning what sort of emails you can send to which groups on the listserv. Residential life halls have their own posting policies, such as the student union, rock painting, library, dining hall. You can find links to all of these different posting policies and marketing policies on our vote.uconnie.edu website. Questions? And again, if you have uh, questions later on about what can I post where, can I use, um, you know, what, what sort of posters can I put where, what buildings can I put them in, uh, just be sure to ask us. We'll be able to help you out. This is the overall policy uh, that student activities has, right? In university buildings that have separate posting policies, see the list at the end of this document or the next page. Items may be posted on those areas clearly designated for public use. This includes, excludes areas that are clear, clearly designated for departmental use. So some buildings will have bulletin boards and you need to get permission to post marketing materials on that specific bulletin board. Under no circumstances <laughs> may items be affixed in any manner to university signs, lampposts, trees, sidewalk. Um, chalking is permitted on sidewalks, right, but not permitted in any areas that are inaccessible to green or vertical surfaces, right, so you can read through this whole marketing posting policy on Some other campaign policies that, again, I won't be able to speak directly to for each respective organization, but good things to keep in mind are all of these campaign spending policies. So personal expenditures, campaign contributions, donations of good, goods, those typically have a cap for each respective organization where you cannot spend more than X number of dollars of your personal money. You cannot get X number, you cannot receive a contribution that is over this cap, right? Travel, typically not considered a campaign expense. Typically, again, depending on the organization, there is maximum expenditures. Raffles and drawings typically are not allowed in campaigning. Um, and then different organizations require some sort of campaign fund documentation by a specific date. Those should be available in your governing documents and your elections info pack. Right. Please make sure that uh, you take this very seriously. Uh, the Department of Student Activities and UConn Elections, we take this seriously. We like to know um, and, and track uh, the, your campaign funds. Keep good record, keep good documentation of what you spend, what you take in. Yes? So specifically for USG elections, where will I go to find um, the caps on that? Will it be on the uh, Student Activities website? It should be on our vote.uconn.edu website in the elections packet specifically for stores US Dream. Yes. And if it's not, just um, contact us and we'll, we'll make sure we can put it up there. Yes. I was going to never mind. Yes. All right. Any other questions before I go on? Campaign violations. I'm going to just read this. Alleged campaign violations are handled within each specific organization. The process and procedure, of course, differs for uh, campaign violations and appeals for each respective organization. Typically, alleged violations of campaign rules and regulations need to be submitted in writing to the appropriate organ organization re representative the same day as the polls close. So for example, I, I, uh, for the student trustee election, those campaign violations need to be submitted by the candidates themselves by 3 o'clock on the uh, close of election polls, March 5th. Uh, for stores USG, campaign violations need to be submitted within 12 hours of the ending of the 
the voting period. So again, each organization is different in how they manage it, the appeals process. So you'll definitely want to know that as well. Those you can find, again, in the elections information packets and in the governing documents, bylaws, and constitutions of your respective organizations. If you have questions about campaign policies, campaign violations, campaign appeals, again, be sure to ask our department or your specific organization representative. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it over for the next, perfect, 30 minutes or so uh, to our current student leaders. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, they're here to answer them to the best of their ability. They're here to share a little bit about their experiences in their student leadership positions. Um, I'll turn it over to you. Do you want to go first, Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I'm, I'm Nandan. I'm a senior uh, computer science major, and I am the current undergraduate student trustee. Um, I was elected first in a special election to serve um, in the, the spring of 2019, um, and then I was elected for my current term, which runs from the fall of 2019 through the spring of 2021. And so the special election, I'm gonna graduate this spring, and so the special election will cover the last year of my term. Um, just show of hands, how many of you are, have heard of the student trustee? A little bit. Oh, wonderful. Okay, this is not the response I usually get. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the student trustee is a full voting member of the Board of Trustees of the University of Connecticut. Um, the Board of Trustees is responsible for um, executive level hires, um, the full budget and policies of the undergraduate or of the whole University of Connecticut, including the health center. So um, what we kind of do in a meeting is we'll review a binder full of items. So this is a binder from June of this year. Um, and this binder, I believe, contains um, reappointments of professors to um, seats, uh, academic affairs, um, ranging from creating new majors to, to kind of approving sabbatical leaves. Um, there's the budget in there. I think it's like $2.7 billion. Um, every kind of major capital project we take on goes to the Board of Trustees. Um, issues go through the Board of Trustees. Like, if you can imagine, the, the Board of Trustees is ultimately responsible for everything that happens at the university. Um, so that being said, the, the, the fact that we are able to elect a student that has uh, both a voice and a vote on that body is something that's pretty rare for universities our size. Um, and so it's, it's really a, a privilege that we go to a university that, that respects the voice of the students, both undergraduate and graduate that much. Um, yeah, I mean, are there any questions? Is, are, is anyone thinking about running? Not right now. Okay. Good. I'll talk to you after. Okay. No, I mean, if you have questions, just ask now because it's being live streamed, mm -hmm. um, and so. I mean, I don't have any like specific questions. I just want to know like more information, okay. kind of like how you got into it. Yeah. Um, so I actually started my uh, my campus political career, if you can call that, in USG as a freshman. Um, I ran for a senate position. Um, my sophomore year, I was the speaker of the senate of the undergraduate student government. The next year, I was the chief justice, um, and now I'm the trustee. Okay. So um, kind of a, a long pathway that you don't actually need to follow, right? Okay. Uh, there so are you no can just jump into it yeah. if you want it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that having the experience definitely is definitely going to help. Yeah. So um, as part of my previous roles, I served um, on University Senate and University Senate Executive Committee. I found that those roles really helped me a lot um, when it came to getting up to speed and understanding what was going on. Yeah. Anyone else? Any, any questions? Come on. Okay. Well, you, you guys should run. Um, <laughs> it's exciting. It's going to be um, up for election again next year, too, um, because my term will end. Great. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Priyanka, and I'm the current student body president. My name is Manny. I'm currently the vice president. 
Um, so I guess a little bit of introduction. Um, I guess a year ago we were in your seats right now running for um, the same election. Um, and I guess some advice for you, definitely look through the election packet um, because we weren't very diligent with looking through the packet and making sure everyone on our campaign team knew exactly what they were doing. We ended up in a month of violation. So that means that our election results were delayed an entire month, which also delayed our transitioning period and hiring and um, getting our governing board trained. Um, so once you are president and vice president, you also get to basically delegate and hire 10 different students as part of your cabinet slash um, executive committee. Um, and they help you make decisions on um, the biggest parts of this university. Um, so me as president, my role is more external. So I meet with um, student affairs as well as Manny actually, um, with the chief of police, with um, student health and wellness, um, I'm also part of the Senate Executive Committee, um, University Senate, and those are more of the student body president base. So I follow more, more of an external role. Whereas I follow more of the internal role. Uh, so I pretty much am the supervisor and overseer of our student activities office, the USG office. We have several employees, um, ranging from the funding staff to the SOC uh, to our very own senators, uh, making sure that everyone's pretty much you know follow, following organizational and office culture, um, organizing community activities. I do attend some of the meetings that Prayok attends as well, um, but then also I get to sit back and also kind of watch sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I show of hands who's thinking running for the president, vice president ticket. All right, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm really happy and um, full support for y'all. If you need any advice or questions, let us know. Um, I think the way that the transitioning period is going to go, um, we have the elections the first week of March, and then there's one more week before spring break. Hopefully, the election results will be released before spring break. Um, if not, if they're released after spring break, then the transitioning period is delayed. Um, but if the results um, as scheduled um, are released before spring break, then we will be transitioning with you all up until the end of March and early April to help you with your board, to help you with um, meeting office staff, getting connected, etc. So um, if you do decide to run, you're definitely not alone in the process of getting into those positions. Um, and we will teach you everything that you need to know during that time um, and always a text away. So. Yeah, our phone numbers are posted, I believe, on the USU website. If not, uh, you can send us a quick email. Our professional as well. numbers are posted. Professional, not yes, cell not our cell phones. Okay. Professional numbers on the USU website, as well as our emails. Um, we have business cards for you to can take as well. Um, but at this point, we're going to do QA. Mm -hmm. So, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah. Um, what were some things that you experienced within campaigning? Some of the most effective strategies and some that you feel mm -hmm. this didn't really work? <laughs> So I guess we could give a little rundown of our campaign. Um, so we, just, just just advice for anyone who's trying to campaign, doesn't really know where to start. Um, I would say first get a campaign manager, someone that's able to lead your campaign so you're not doing it yourself. Um, it's really hard to be candidates and be your own campaign manager. And it's be just, a and be a student, it's, it's just not feasible. So have your some of one of your closest friends like help you with your campaign. They know who you are, they know your values, they can advocate on your behalf. I also recommend formulating a campaign team. Um, for the president and vice president ticket, the average is around 60 students on the campaign team. And I also recommend having a inner group of students that you can trust wholeheartedly with, with anything. So have a small group, but also a larger group that can table for you, put up flyers, um, chalk, anything that you might need during that time. Um, I also recommend, um, again, following the policies, reading through the packet, like highlighting everything you don't know, um, because anything you don't know can be used against you, um, and you don't want that, right? Like, you you know, you want a smooth transition, and you want a smooth election process, and I don't want things to be pointed at you um, like they were pointed at us. Um, so I recommend reading through the policies itself, and then kind of schedule a meeting with Avalyn. She is the best, and um, she will go through the entire packet with you if need be, um, and help you through the process as well. Um, I also recommend, like, you're running for the students, right? So make sure that you are presenting yourself to them. Make sure they know who you are, that those are my VP and P, you know? Like, I want them to represent me. And I think that was one of our favorite parts about the campaign process, is that people were proud that we were representing them, and that's what you want ultimately. Like, students who are proud that you are representing them and you are their student body president and vice president. Um, and I think it's definitely been a challenging re year for us, being students, having two jobs. Uh, both of us work another job as well. Um, but it's, it's very rewarding in the sense that you get to see change happen every day. You get to be in those rooms with administrators, be part of the decision-making process. I think Nandan can say the same. Um, and that's something very rewarding that not many students get to do. 
And when I go into meetings, I say my name is Priyanka, but I'm also a name of 19,000 other students because I, I'm here with, with, with one student position representing 19,000 students. And that's a really, really big deal that I don't think a lot of people understand. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking that already. Um, but yeah, I know, definitely make yourself very visible, very accessible. Uh, use social media, I think that's really important, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, I think is a thing now too. Um, <laughs> point is, you know, you are students as well. Yes, this is a very serious campaign, but that being said, um, they also want to see what makes you you, you know, what different experiences have led you to this position. Um, what connections do you have? What connections do you plan on building? Whether that's meeting with different student leaders, meeting with different uh, administration members, or just networking, um, you know, within your body it's, as, itself as well. Um, and then also I'd recommend um, trust your campaign partner um, because you're going to be working with them heavily, nonstop, 24-7. Um, and so it's really good to have a very cohesive relationship. Always try to be on the same page, yeah. communicate with each other. Um, they, they're going to be your professional best friend and hopefully at the end they'll also be your best friend as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hope that, you know, that the, the, the candidates who are running for Peen, President and Vice President, um, you all really trust your running mates because at the end of the day, like when things go rough, like that's who you lean on. And that's how, you know, that's the connection that you build with, with each other. And, you know, we see each other a lot, like a lot. <laughs> and, you know, we also have another job where we work together as well. So um, it's really important that you build that trusting relationship with them and that you can count on them. And know that once you do have your, um, your partner, you're not alone because you also have your chief of staff. You have your PR director, you have Alvin, uh, who's also part of our cabinet, you have your committee chairs, you can also lean on for support. Um, so you're never really alone, and we also have a great advising team with Kurt, Krista, and Alquan um, that have helped us through the entire process of transitioning, and that when we don't have the answers to, to, to as many um, day to day issues, they will definitely help and solve us and be there for us. So, yeah, any questions? That was a good question. Great question. Anything about like day to day duties, like transitioning periods? Yeah. Come what on. is like a normal week like? Like in terms of like your duties, like responsibilities. Try because we have different weeks. I think. Yeah. We have different yeah. Um. So on average, you're probably putting in at least fifteen, at most 20, 25 hours a week. Um. I would say a normal week will consist of uh, meetings both with administration. Um, as well as student groups, as well as student leaders. So for example, uh, there's internal leaders such as the speaker, such as the chief of justice, where you might meet with them uh, to see where initiatives overlap. Uh, you can be meeting with other senators to talk about initiatives that they're going through, or you can meet with university admins, such as our president, Tom Kitzleis, or division of student affairs, or simply residential affairs, um, talking about kind of problems that are going on in their communities and how can we help as undergraduate student government. Um, and then on top of that, you also will be making connections with another uh, tier three organizations. So for example, uh, SUVOG, WUS, uh, Daily Canvas as well, all those different publications and media, uh, you'll also be working in tandem with them. So for example, just letting them know about what you're doing, uh, what you have upcoming, um, kind of scheduling those meetings because I think those are very integral to the role. It's very easy to, um, it's very easy to be very narrow-minded, but like your organization is part of something bigger. It's part of UConn Nation. Um, and then I would say, also just taking classes, you know, you're a student as well. Um, so I'd say I try to build my schedule around, you know, my classes, this job, my second job, and then all the personal stuff comes after. Um, does that kind of answer your question a little bit? Yeah, so I would, to summarize it, it's a lot of meetings, public appearances, um, and then also scheduling and doing some paperwork and planning things for the future. Yeah. I think speci specifically the student body president, they asked you to be at a lot of these big meetings. So at the Senate Executive Committee meeting that oversees the University Senate at its, at, um, as a whole, um, the student body president in their bylaws is mandated to, to be there. Um, they're also present at um, some board of trustee meetings if they're part of a coalition or a committee or a workforce or task force. Um, there's a lot of different um, committees and task force that the university itself holds and admin run that they would like the student body president to be on. And if the student body president can be uh, on there, um, Manny goes, or one of my chief of staff, or um, another representative of my body. Um, so it depends on what the meeting is about, but usually the high level meetings, most of my week are, are attending those meetings and be present, asking questions, and being representative for the students. I would say that another part of my job is um, also being able to answer emails, communicate, um, leading a cabinet as well. Um, as student body president, you, um, have, I, I would say around 10 to 12 people supervising to you, so you have to guide your task and, and be able to supervise them day to day as well. Um, 
So a lot of different tasks, depending on the president itself and what your values and initiatives are, you can guide it any way. And I really appreciate how flexible our roles are. Like, yes, we have our day to day that we have to do it and keep going. Um, but there's also a lot of flexibility and room for stuff that we want to do and stuff that we're passionate about and we would like to see in the student body. Um, so there's definitely a lot of ways that you can maneuver your own schedule when you get into a role. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, I had a question kind of going off of that. So I know that you guys have kind of like different roles, like internal, external, mm -hmm. but is there um, a possibility that like, would Manny be able to join you in the um, like the meetings that you usually go to, or like would you join him, vice versa? So is there like yeah. that way to like mix the roles or like put them together, or like right. not as much as so much together, but just kind of like support each other and join each other in the roles that each one has? Right, and that that's that's where I go back to having good relation with your present vice president, okay. because once you have a present, once you have a relationship, mm -hmm. that happens all the time. Okay. Where I'm like Manny, I, I kind of want your opinion on this. Like come mm -hmm. with me, like it's scheduled at this time, or. I want you to be in this video or in this like public appearance. Like, I want you to be there with me. Mm -hmm. And then when he feels that my role or, or my voice is necessary, he will also let me know. Okay. Or um, keep, we keep each other in the loop all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have our own different tasks, but yes, yeah. exactly. Like we always kind of merge in and he comes find me and sometimes and I come to him. Okay, perfect. I, I will say this though, some committees like Senate Exec, you cannot have a stand in um, because they're like, they're all confidential. Nothing that is said in those meetings can leave the meeting. Okay. And there's only one person authorized to be there. So that, that is a thing, too. Okay, yeah. It's rare, though, that those meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's only one meeting, I would say, of mine. But if I'm meeting, for example, I have a meeting with Michael Gilbert, the head of student affairs, mm -hmm. um, every month. And um, Manny comes with me when he goes to meetings as well. Any other questions? Well, we wish you the best of luck. Yeah, right. Really? <laughs> what are like your most difficult meetings? Um, do you ever like have a meeting that you're like, oh, like I don't know how to feel, or just you're just like not prepared to go to some of these mm -hmm. meetings? Mm -hmm. I would say all the time, and that's not just be that's not because I don't have the knowledge or I didn't study up. It's because sometimes these rooms are intimidating, and I guess the one the biggest piece of advice I say is is, and when you, when you, when you get in, into this role, it'll be more clear to you, but how you can make space for yourself. I think definitely as a woman of color, I, I've i been intimidated or I felt like I didn't have my own voice there, um, but you do. It's just how you create your space for yourself. And I would say it takes a few months learning the role and learning how you want to present yourself and how you want to maneuver those ropes. But once you get it right, like, and you will, it becomes a lot more easier. Um, so I, I would say like when you're going to these meetings, just read the minutes of the meetings beforehand or ask them to send the agenda of the meeting before. And I, I always come in with questions prepared so that when they ask me, or even you know, they don't ask for my opinion, like I'll still talk and I'll still again provide a space for myself. Okay, well, again, best of luck to you all. Like, please let us know. Um, our email is just president at usaucon.edu and then vice president at usaucon.edu. So if you have any questions about the role specifically, um, just to note, there is no campaigning in the USC office or second floor at all. Um, so we won't be able to talk about your campaign directly in the office, but if you need any day-to-day -day, like jobs or duties or if you have questions about the role itself, um, please email us and let us know. No, I, I don't think so. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks. So, hi everyone. Um, once again, I'm Avalyn. I'm the Elections and Outreach Commissioner, so I'm basically running the show uh, for our elections. By a show of hands, who is interested in running for either senator, comptroller, president, like in the USG elections, basically, not student trustee? Okay. So I, I'm only asking just because I have the election packet. So here you go, by hard copy. Thank you. No problem. Two. Two. Can I get a copy? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Also, here is my card. Let me try to hand this out here. So, my email is on it. That's the best way to reach me. Um, yeah, so just to kind of quickly walk you through the most, uh, I don't know, the things I really want to bring your attention to. 
The first page just has all of our open positions and how many seats there are. So um, one thing I also do want to note about the president and vice president um, ticket is when you are filling out that intent to run, you do have to know who you are running with. Um, so it's a very important piece in the past. I know I've heard of people that knew they wanted to run for president, but they didn't have a running mate. So unfortunately, you, you can't run for the ticket if you don't have a running mate. So it's very important to know. So if you know that you want to be vice president, but you need to find someone to run president with, uh, definitely do that by the next week or so. Um, and then comptroller is just comptroller. Um, all the other ones uh, just have how many seats are open for all of our senator positions. So this, um, this election, all of our academic seats are up. So if you are interested in representing your school or college, that uh, this is the election for you, your, and your term will end next spring. Um, we also, this is also the election for our multicultural and diversity seats, which we're really excited for this year, as we now have seven seats open versus the two which we've had in the past. Um, so this is just for anyone that feels that they come from an underrepresented community um, on campus. Um, and you feel that you can really, you know, make be an advocate, agent of change. Um, so that is an at-large seat, meaning that everyone at, um, on the undergraduate student or on the, on the undergraduate campus would be able to vote for you. Um, whereas in the other seats, the academic and residential seats, it's only the people that are within that given school or college or academic, or excuse me, residential area that can vote for you. So that is uh, the main distinction. Multicultural diversity senators, uh, anyone can vote for you. So. Um, next page has a timeline, which is uh, definitely, I, I hope I made it as concise and as understandable as possible. So in the timeline right now, we're at Wednesday, January 29th, which is our, obviously, this information session. The intent to run form is due next Friday, and then the following Friday, the petition by peers form is due. Um, but like I mentioned, um, student activities doesn't need, it, doesn't need it until the 18th, so for me, like I said, I, I try to be a very nice and accommodating person, so I totally can understand, especially for those of you that are running for president, vice president, you can't get all the signatures by the 14th. Um, we'll definitely work something out as long as before the 18th. But, um, and one piece of advice that I do want to uh, share is if you uh, handed in that intent to run form, I really encourage you to start getting signatures. All you need are people's names and email addresses um, so even if you start like a Google form or a Google doc and you start taking some down until, um, I just don't want you to have to wait on me because I will send you a link uh, to, for your U contact page, which will be the primary way that you will be taking your signatures. So if um, candidates go out and collect uh, email addresses and names, yes. will they be able to like backfill that into U contact? Exactly. Okay. So that's why I recommend, um, and also I recommend doing that in the event that Maybe it did scan, or maybe <coughs> you contact messes up, um, and you lose everything, which hasn't happened. But um, just in the event, you know, technology, it's always good to keep record for yourself of who filled out your petition. So you can do that for sure. Do you recommend like kind of like a Google sheet? Yeah, that and it, I I would recommend doing. I know people in the past election were doing that, and they found that it worked out better for them because they were able to kind of get more access at getting these signatures. I personally am not a believer that getting signatures should be difficult. I hate that it is a barrier to people applying or running for positions, so I try to make it as easy as possible. So even if you you know, you know, have a Google Sheet and you're able to keep track of everything and even share it with me if you want to have peace of mind. I know a few candidates did last semester just so like they had their peace of mind, um, so you can totally do that. Um, but like I said, just to kind of expedite the process and make sure that you have all your signatures in time, I'd recommend getting them before, and then once you get that you contact page, you can literally just copy and paste everything into it. And you said 450 signatures? Yes, that's it for president slash vice president and comptroller. Okay. Now I do also want to mention, again, because you, president and vice president are on the same ticket, that doesn't mean that you have to get a total of, what is that, 900? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still 450 for like the both of you, okay. if that makes sense. I want to be sure. Just to chime in, sorry for interrupting. Um, Stores USG has a policy where they'll accept electronic signatures. Not all student organizations do accept electronic signatures. STEP, for example, Student Trustee of the Election Committee, still requires a paper form with handwritten signatures. So, yeah, big distinction. But, like, for President, Vice President, Comptroller, Senators, electronic is fine. Do you have a question? No. No? So, question. Um, why 450? Um, I think that's just kind of looking at the numbers in the past and also like I said I 
don't want this to be a barrier, and signatures have always been a barrier in the past. Um, so it was just kind of a number that I felt was appropriate. Yeah, it's no brush back, I promise. <laughs> Um, and then next up, as Kurt mentioned, the candidate photo shoots will be the 20th through the 21st. Something else I want to throw out there. Um, 19th through the 20th. 19th through the then 20th. moved up one day. Okay, we moved up one day, so it's wrong with the packet, but so definitely need that correction. I'll make that change too. I'll email you the revised version and all that. Um, but USG, we will also be taking headshots for our own personal social media. We plan on doing some social media, uh, what, do you, what do you call them, like shout out what? things? Okay. Yeah, like things like that. So highlights, highlights. So we basically uh, plan on uh, once we get all the information down and during like campaigning season, uh, we'll be highlighting everyone that's running for president and vice president as well as comptroller on our social media as well as other outlets. So you'll be hearing from us about um, either doing a short video or taking pictures with us too. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so I filled out the um, intent to run form and it said that we had to write kind of like a summary of ourselves or like yeah, um and but sense. yeah and it was due by the 14th yes so do we eat like i didn't fill it out with mm -hmm. my um form yep. but we can email that to you or do we fill up a new form or how does that you, work honestly you can literally just email me the candidate okay, perfect. form yeah or not form like just a just 200 the, words or less yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so you course. can be like Hey, Alan, mm -hmm. I'm Blase Blase. Here's my candidate statement, and I'll literally just copy and paste it in because I have like a key, I have a Google form of everyone's intent to run, so I'll just okay. add it in there. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, so for those of you that haven't filled out the intent to run form, and um, like she mentioned, at the bottom, you are required to submit a candidate statement. However, it's not due until the 14th, so it's uh, optional on the form. Um, so, you can either uh, do as she's doing and you know, send me an email by the 14th with your candidate statement, or you can submit it right then and there with the intent to run form. I just, again, wanted to give people as much time as possible to really come up with something uh, thoughtful, put thought into it, so that's not due until the 14th either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the presidential debate. Again, we are still working on a location, um, but the date is going to be February 24th. Um, so again, this is just gonna be an opportunity where all of our president, vice president, as well as comptroller candidates will uh, be answering questions on a variety of issues that our campus is facing, as well as the world as a whole, and you'll be able to uh, kind of, people will probably ask you questions too. So we'll have some moderated questions, but we will also uh, do a short, a very brief Q&A, uh, just for people that are there to ask as well. Okay, um, and then yeah, so like I so said, those important dates are basically everything that Kurt had uh, just mentioned. Um, the next couple of pages are just uh, pretty long descriptions just about our committees, which I really encourage you to, to join or uh, come out to any of those meetings if you're able to. Um, they're really great, and they kind of familiarize you with DSG, um, but those aren't required. And then it just has more position descriptions, so I can totally look through those. So, um, this is the really important note election and campaign policies, you can find all of them on the USG website. I didn't print them out because I didn't want to waste a ton of paper. Um, but please, 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 like Manny and Priyanka said, read through them. I recommend that if you are running for, especially, especially for president and vice president, like talking directly to you guys, please print them out, highlight them, star things. If there are anything that, if there's anything you don't understand that doesn't make sense to you, I'm literally an email away or a text away. Like, I'm right in the USG office as well. Um, I should have written, wrote my office hours down, but I'll let you guys know that in a second so you can write it down. Um, but please, 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 because the presidential and vice president election is the election where there are always tons of violations because obviously, you know, people are trying to win. Let's be real here. So pe it's sad that people use the violations as a way to win, but it's what happens. So you definitely don't want anything to come against you, um, and that won't happen if you're prepared. Um, so like I said, I'm more than happy to meet with you guys. We can sit down together and look through them and I can just answer any questions that you might have. So definitely take some time to look through those and really understand them. Um, the intent to run form is online. You can find it um, on our USG website, on our Instagram, on the vote.ucon.edu website. So when you go on our USG website, you'll see the elections tab, and the elections tab literally redirects you to the vote.ucon.edu that has everything on there, including the intent to run form. Um, and the petition by peers, again, if you're running for, um, if you're running for a Senate position, so a senator, you only need 50 signatures. Ten of the, at least 10 of them do have to be from your constituency. So if I'm a Hilltop Halls running for that uh, position, at least 10 people that of my signatures have to be people that live in Hilltop Halls. 
and then the other 40 can be just you know other undergraduate students. Um, as Kurt mentioned before, we do always encourage you to go a little over just in case maybe someone isn't eligible to vote in these elections and unfortunately they can't endorse you in the petition. So you definitely, it, it has happened before and you don't want that to happen to you. So even if it's just like five to ten more signatures, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, but just a few more over the um, requirement. And then for president, vice president seat, uh, that's 450 signatures. And again, that's just for per ticket. So um, if it's you and someone else running for president and vice president, you only need 450 signatures, not like 900, not like 450 each, just 450 for both of you guys. Um, those signatures can overlap through like everybody, right? Meaning like someone can sign mine and sign theirs and yeah. Oh yes, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. So it's like, yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, as long as their stores um, undergraduates, mm -hmm. they are usually all set to go. Perfect. All right. Question. Um, I've noticed the uh, differences between the vote.ucon.edu website and what it says in the uh, election packet, such as in the packet it says that there's a spot for Busby, but on the website, no such thing. So which one should I refer to? The packet or the website? So, uh, yeah, I would always go back to the packet. This is what I directly update most frequently. Um, sometimes it might take a second for it to update on the website. So, refer yeah, refer to the packet always. So there is a Busby seat open. So, you know, you're looking into running for that. Um, and yeah, and like I said, the forms do, on the, four, on the 14th, I'm willing to work with you, and that's like honestly with everything. I'm here for you to support you guys through this. Um, you have my card, I gave that to everyone, right? All right, perfect. So um, that's basically all that I have for you guys. Any questions at all? No? Okay. Another really great person that I do want to shout out is Caleb. He is our Chief Justice. I have to put you on the spot a little bit, but really, he is also an probably a bet, honestly a better resource than I am in terms of the policies. He is the one that will be reading all the violations and has done them in the past. So he's your go-to guy if you have any questions about the language, but as I am as, I am as well. But he's also great, very familiar with the language of it, interpreting it. So either Caleb and I, if you have any um, like policy, election policy specifics. I'll just add a few, yeah. it's not a problem. Um, if you would like to chat with me or meet with me to avoid meeting with me later in violation hearings, um, my email is judiciary at usg.ucon.edu. Um, I'm in the office Mondays 1.30 to 3.30 and Fridays 12 to 2. Um, like Avalon said, um, she's a great resource too, absolutely. Um, if you have questions on the minutia of the policies, if you're wondering like, hey, I'm worried about violating this, Help me not violate it. I will be more than happy to give you advice or you know, tell you what to watch out for um, because as the one who has to do all of the hearings, I'm the first one that doesn't want any good hearing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm always here. And my office hours, I'm in the office Mondays from 2.15 to 4. Um, so yeah, I'm just super not barely on campus this semester, so I usually like to tell people more so by appointment. Um, if you want my personal number, I'm happy to give it to you. Um, but yeah, so those are my office hours. My email is up there. And yeah, so thank you guys for listening to us chat your ears off. <laughs> um, I don't know if you have anything else to add, Kurt. Nope, that's about it. Uh, folks.